This conversation today is about your story, Tanya Shah. Thank you for coming on We Can and chatting to me about what's important to you. You're an 11th grader from Livingston in New Jersey in the USA, and you care deeply about STEM. You <laughs> care deeply about technology. You just did a TED -ed talk with Etta Girls, uh, Ilana Rea, who's also a role model all about girls avoiding things they can't be perfect at and how that means losing out on opportunities. It's this inability of girls to be able to mess up. They don't do things if they're not perfect at them. And we need to instead stay curious because curiosity creates growth and creates opportunities. And that's sort of a central theme for you. You also built a memory care app called Remini. And we're going to talk about all of that, Tanya. So thank you for getting in touch. Thank you for um, telling your story today. Tell us a little bit what sparked your passion in STEM and technology. Yeah, so I was always so very passionate about tech and coding, especially because I found that there were so many things you could do with it. Like since I was young, I used to love like making little games in different programming languages or building little quizzes for my friends, which is what really got me excited about it. But then once I started to see more about the actual apps on like my phone, my laptop, my iPad, I realized that the power that technology can have for real widespread social good, which is why I knew I wanted to get more involved in creating an app or a website that could help real people. Tanya, so talk to us about this TED talk that you did with Etre um, for girls in New York, I think just a week or two ago. This is up on um, YouTube, by the way, now for anyone who's listening and wants to, to and listen to Tanya Shah, Etre Girls uh, on their YouTube mm -hmm. channel. There are those TED talks. Talk to us about this topic that really you feel very strongly about. That is sort of your message and and what it felt like being on that stage. Yeah, so I was definitely nervous again to like begin with it, but I knew from the moment that I figured out about this TED opportunity that I definitely wanted to talk about perfection in girls because I truly see it so much in the STEM field. For example, so many of my friends, so many of my classmates, they don't want to join STEM fields because of how many errors you have to reach. Like in coding, after every program, you're going to get like 15, 20 bugs and errors. And that's just a part of the process. But it's so difficult for girls to grasp that idea that these mistakes are just part of the learning process. And I've seen that. For example, last year I took an AP computer science class and so many of the girls in that class had actually dropped out of it because the first test had a lot of hands-on programming and figuring out these issues, which is a difficult thing for so many girls. And even not joining clubs and uh, teams that are more male dominated can also show this issue of avoiding doing things imperfectly. Like so many girls that I've talked to, my own friends have not wanted to join the, like the robotics team or the math team because it's predominantly a male dominated field mm -hmm. and it can get really nervous and exhilarating to be in that kind of environment and knowing that you're going to be making mistakes and making a fool of yourself, which is not a common thing to many girls. But I think it's important to get more accustomed and feel more comfortable with failure and messing up and making a fool out of yourself because I think that's what can really teach you to like grow and do things better the next time which is why I specifically wanted to emphasize the idea of imperfection in girls for my TED Talk. Yeah, which is great. And I think you're so right, Tanya. What do you feel is different with you? Because I think this really is an affliction that most girls and women have, also because of the narratives we grow up in, right? We are less allowed to fail. We have to be more perfect. We have to be more good. So we, we are taught from a very early age different things from boys. What do you feel contributed to you being confident in joining those spaces that are not sort of... Uh, typically or, or, or historically made for girls? I think for me, I think having a space, for example, when I was in eighth grade, I joined this like tech program where I got to learn about coding and Swift in particular under the leadership of a very like female uh, empowering space. I did it with a program called Code with, Code with Classy, which was sponsored by Carly Kloss yeah. and J. Crew mm -hmm. when I'd done it. And it was a very like feminine and it was a good energy of an environment and it made me excited about STEM I think. I think having that space where STEM is something appreciated and it's not viewed as something purely for boys or purely all 
like robust but in that kind of environment where we got to like make things with fashion and beauty and skincare those industries which were exciting to me really gave me a passion and also got me excited about STEM. I think that's another issue that so that prevents so many girls from joining the STEM field is they're not excited about it because mm. they don't see it resonating with them. And it makes sense though, because before you know anything about it, before you know anything about coding, the image that coding is, is generally just like black and white, boring, making robots that don't really do anything that you can tell or like chips or things that are just too much jargon. But I think simplifying it and making a nice inclusive space made it really exciting. And I think also the teachers that I have there made it a very exciting environment for me to learn in and made it a place that I knew I could go back to and thrive after having that community. Still, some of the friends, I did that program when I was in eighth grade, but still some of the friends I have there are people I can look back to while building my app and in the STEM field for advice or just having a strong community. So yeah. essentially, I think that having a good community and a good environment to learn was definitely integral, but also having good role models, I think there was important to making sure I was still passionate about and excited about staying in the STEM field. Otherwise, I think I too would have been discouraged and wouldn't have pursued anything related yeah. to that. Yeah, and Kali Klaus is an amazing role model, and she set up this mm -hmm. coding um, uh, sort of education network that I think is all over the world by now. She's amazing. So it's amazing to hear that you did that. So talk to us a little bit about, about creating this uh, Remini. How, how did you think of that? Why is that important to you? Yeah, so I am creating it also with a team of developers, but I had first conceptualized this idea actually through a school project. So my group was like assigned making a biotechnology app to combat something in the nervous system. So my group had gotten the disease dementia. So we had to create a biotechnology app that assesses or helps with dementia or Alzheimer's. And at first, my group, I had proposed the idea of Remini, which is a memory care reminiscence therapy platform in which a caretaker can input photos and questions, which are memories, and then the patient can answer those questions to reinforce their understanding of the people in the photo, when it was taken, and where it was taken. So at first, the idea was very shunned out by the rest of my group mates, and we actually ended up not even using it for the project, but I still thought that this is something that is passionate to me, and that's something that like gets me excited, because I've seen like my grandmother so she has like a deteriorating memory. She doesn't have Alzheimer's or dementia, mm. but still she has memory decline that comes with age. But I would see her always looking back at old photos and videos of our family um, when we were younger to help her recall these memories. And it would also make her happy and excited. So then I did a little further research on that. And I figured out that it was something called reminiscence therapy, which is an actual therapy that's used in memory care homes and hospitals around the world. And I realized that there was no way to digitize this reminiscence therapy of looking back at old photographs and having conversations about them to reinforce memory. But I realized that I could do something to create this into a digital format to make it more accessible and easier for patients mm -hmm. to use, as well as give quantifiable tracking. That And that data can later be shared with doctors or professionals yeah. to see what parts of the brain are deteriorating. For example, if a patient is continuously forgetting the people in a photograph, that shows temporal lobe decline, which is why this can also be used for actual medical research and reports, while also being free or partly being free and accessible to so many people to use, which is why I decided to create that, inspired by my grandmother. Sounds hugely exciting, Tanya. How cool is that? So you're an 11th grader, Tanya. What do you feel matters most to you and how do you want to matter going forward? What is your sort of vision? Yeah, so right now, I think the topic that's really like stuck out to me is somehow increasing the amount of women in STEM or making STEM a more inclusive environment for everybody. Because I've seen in STEM classes how I felt ostracized and felt that I needed to leave or I felt undermined or less than than so many of the other boys in my class. Particularly, I took an electrical engineering class in my freshman year, ninth grade, and I was the only girl. And I used to sit by myself and just do my own projects. And that's not an inclusive environment for somebody who's not even fully committed to STEM. I knew that if I wasn't fully interested in STEM, I would have just left the class. But I was, which is why I decided to continue. And I realized that having that kind of environment was so important and also having the opportunities to join a field like STEM. That's often difficult to break into. But once you are, it shows so many possibilities and there's so much that you could do with it, which is why I think increasing the amount of women in STEM is something that's really 
passionate to me. And the TED Talk about perfection was one way to help publicize the idea and also creating my app Remini because I want other people my age to also be able to see the things that people like me, just like 16 year olds, 16 year olds are doing and that can inspire and make other people more excited. For it well. Yes, Tanya. And I really think that we grown-ups have to listen to you young people much more because it's your future that we are all a part of and you're also a part of it and it doesn't mean that you're 16 and therefore your opinions or your insights are less valuable um tanya so what do you feel makes you sort of feel powerful and aligned and in integrity with yourself I think having a good community and people that support you is really important. I think like having a close group of people that you can go to when you have issues, whether it be something in the STEM field or you're feeling ostracized or alone can really be helpful. I think for me, I have a group of friends in some of my classes that we always work together on coding projects and it's really inclusive and it doesn't feel like a competition or that you're not allowed to make mistakes mm -hmm. because making mistakes is definitely part of the process in STEM and it can help everybody grow and learn. Definitely. Definitely. What do you feel are deal breakers for you? Uh, sorry, um, what do you mean? What do you feel are deal breakers for you? You know, when you have a sort of situation and you think, no, that's a hard no for me. Yeah, I think when people are being really rude or kind of ostracizing in a way that makes me feel less than, I definitely want to make it uh, known to those people that, do like it's rude to undermine people or just don't don't treat people like this and I think rather than it being a deal breaker that would make me like leave the field it makes me excited to tell these people to um like stop and make it kind of more like publicize that yeah don't like don't mess with all of these girls and these people especially people who are excited because it's rude and also you can't it's not okay to make people feel less than I think everybody should need to feel valued for me to be a part of the team. And yet you've done so much. And what do you think success looks like for you? I think having one day being part of like tech environments that are like exciting and that I feel celebrated in, but not just me, where all girls feel celebrated in and being able to like go to tech conferences or meetings and seeing these people who are equally excited as me is definitely what I think success would be. Tanya, what are your plans and goals? What do you what 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 are you working toward? Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely working currently to expand the outreach of my app. It's going to be ready to launch by the end of November. So I definitely want to gain gain more feedback and testing about my app that I can like later implement into like other beta versions and make this more um kind of like a household thing in hospitals and in dementia care families, because I really think that such an accessible solution could be really helpful. Yeah, it will be super helpful. So how do you, what would you like our listeners to take away from your story and your learnings and your insights? So for me, I think that like what I would want people to take away from this is just getting, being okay with making mistakes and imperfection, especially in the STEM field and especially for people my age. I think I would want people to try new things and get excited about these new things and just inspire more curiosity with people is what I want. Tanya, you are a role model and you know that and you've been on the TED at stage and you are you're reaching for those opportunities where you can role model. Who are your role models? Who do you look to, to find inspiration and motivation? So one of my most biggest role models is actually Reshma Sujani, who's the CEO of Girls Who Code. Yes. And I had like the honor of meeting with her uh, two years ago. And we talked a lot about the idea of imperfection in girls. And that was the first time that this topic had been open to me because she also wrote a really inspiring book called Brave, Not Perfect. Yes. And I also, so she's definitely one of my biggest role models. But I also think that Emily Weiss, who's the CEO of Glossier, mm. uh, the makeup company, I read a book about her and seeing her story and her entrepreneurial drive, especially with when Glossier was just a small startup, is definitely inspiring. And I definitely want to embody some of those characteristics when I'm building my own. 
Tanya, I think you are amazing. We are big fans. We are so grateful that you got in touch, that you told your story here. We can't wait to interview you again when you're further down the road. We're excited that you're getting more girls to come into the STEM and the technology field because we're living in the age of a technological revolution and we need many more girls and women to be a part of it. So you are a piece of that puzzle and it's hugely exciting to watch you and the next things that you're going to be up to and congratulations on Remini super excited when that comes out and I'm sure we will talk again thank you so much I look forward to it as well thank you